It's time for an inside look at the most powerful motorsport on the planet. WFO Radio, NHRA Nitro. Here we go. Final interview as we get ready for the Chevrolet Performance U.S. Nationals. And before we get to Robert Height, three-time winner, points leader, going into the final seven races of the year. All you John Force Racing fans, thank you so much for checking out this show. We have had so many great interviews in the WFO Radio podcast feed. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, hopefully you will subscribe and follow your favorite drivers all the way through the NHRA countdown. And then we keep going right into the winter break. We keep doing interviews, follow all the news. It is amazing. Next thing you know, it'll be the Winter Nationals. But don't say that because we have got the 2019 U.S. Nationals and Countdown all coming up. Big thanks to the sponsors who made this great week possible. Talking about Rodax Coffee and Grills.com and MagicDryUS.com, Hanks Defers Metalworking Lubricants, Samtech.edu, getting a lot of positive feedback on the Factory Stock Podcast with Kurt Collins and Leah and Daryl Heron and Jason Line, Brian Massengill. Everybody is loving it. But most importantly, we're building awareness of the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology, samtech.edu. Talking about Frank Hawley's Drag Racing School, the Dragster Adventure. Did you know you could be like Robert Height? You could go out and drive a dragster, feel what it's like. Go to frankhawley.com to find out more. And Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology. Go to totalseal.com, all you engine builders out there. It has been a fantastic week, but honestly, I am super excited. I know the Lucas Oil Series cars have been on track since Wednesday, but now it is time for Nitro. Nitro primetime Friday night. Everybody is fired up. I am fired up. Five sessions of qualifying, the biggest drag race on the planet. All you podcast listeners, it's just time. Let's get into it. Joining us now on Indie Week here on WFO Radio, he is a three-time U.S. Nationals winner, drives for John Force Racing, is the points leader, Robert Height. Robert, welcome back. How do you feel about this weekend? Hey, I'm ready. It's Indy, uh, the biggest race of the year. Um, you know, you always look forward to Indy, and, you know, it's kind of Indy's, Indy is Indy, okay? It's, it's the U.S. Nationals, the biggest race of the year, but you know, right after that, you start the countdown. So, uh, you know, this is an, this is an exciting time of the year. It's, it's, you know, for all the marbles from here on out, every single run you make, um, is magnified. It's, it's so important. And, uh, I can't wait to get going Friday night. Is there a point as you get closer where the reality sets in of what you're about to do, the marathon, the additional qualifying sessions, the fact that, you know, the eyes of the drag racing world and motorsports world at a greater level are focused on Indianapolis, Labor Day weekend, the Chevrolet Performance U.S. Nationals. You got a lot going on, I know, but like that competitor's drive, the feeling, the excitement that someone might get before the Super Bowl. You know, I think it's it it sets in when you get here. Uh, I got in the, I got in already. I'm, I'm in, in in Indy. Got here last Friday. Spent the weekend. And, you know, you just walk through our shops, okay, and we're based out of here, and it's home. So everybody's excited. They, they can't wait to, to be out to the racetrack. You know, these guys in the shops, they, they don't, they're not on the road like all the race teams. Uh, so they, they don't get to enjoy the, the cars going up and down the track and the winds and winter circles and, and all that. So, you know, I think we, we really put a lot of emphasis on, you know, not, you know, Indy because it's the biggest race of the year, the, the history, everything about it. But I also think that because of our teams and fab shop, machine shop, paint and decal, the office people, all those, they're going to be out there with us. And we want to, we want to get them in the winter circle and, you know, let them help celebrate, you know, their achievements, what they've accomplished and, and, and built for us. Because if it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Uh, that's for sure at John Force Racing. So you got a couple of championships under your belt, fifty wins under your belt. Let's talk about these U.S. Nationals victories, though. In the where do they, you know, what spot do they hold in your heart? I think about times that I've spoken with Daytona 500 winners and Indy 500 winners, and I really want this race to take uh, that kind of you know gravity 
uh, when when casual fans are observing the race, when they realize that this is the same thing. So if I was speaking with Amaro Andretti or an Al, Al Unser, they, they would, you know, they remember everything that happened that day from the morning, uh, you know, the bagpipes going through the big track around the corner. But at the U.S. Nationals, is it the same? Like when you look back at your U.S. Nationals victories, do you feel that intensity? Can you remember moments and thoughts from each of your victories? Yes, I can. And, you know, what's funny is, before I ever won Indy, I had already won some races. It wasn't like, you know, that uh, it was going to be my first win. But I'm not kidding you. The first time I was in the final at Indy and ended up winning, it was 06, uh, I'm backing up from the burnout. And, you know, the clutch pedal, it's it's not hard to push in on a funny car. It's, uh, you know, we make it to where it's pretty easy, actually. It's got a lot of leverage. But my leg was shaken. Okay, my left leg is I'm backing up from the burnout and you're trying to keep the, the clutch cool and in neutral as much as you can. And my left leg is just my knees are knocking. You've heard that 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 term. Yes. And le- literally my left foot was shaking and I'm I'm got to talk to myself at this point and I'm okay. This is big. Yes, it's big. It's indie. But if you want to win it, you better gather your thoughts and get to get you know, get it together here. Okay. Because you're a wreck right now and you know, pretty quick, you're going to back up and you're going to have to stage the car and leave on time and drive it. And you better gather it up and, and get your act together here. That's how important that race is. I mean, it, it, and you know, it's never really happened to me since, but this was Indy and you know, I couldn't believe I'm in the winter or I'm in the final round and who was in the other the lane? Win. Who was in the other lane? Remind us. Whit Bazemore. Ooh. Wow, Whit. I think honestly, I think that was Whit's last funny run in a funny car. Um, because after that, um, he left DSR and then went to a Top Fuel. Very interesting. The next race is when Beckman took over driving that car. Wow. How about that? And then your next win was in 2008, and you shared the winner's circle, by the way, in 2006 with uh, Tony Schumacher and Greg Anderson and Matt Smith, so uh, great racers with, uh, you know, huge numbers. And then in 2008, and that was in the middle of Tony Schumacher's just dominance, four in a row and, like, you know, seven out of eight craziness, but uh, you shared it with Dave Connolly. Tell me about the 2008 final round. Yeah, that's... um... You know, that's, it's a big one. Uh, you know, when you start winning multiple indies and now you're, you're starting to talk about, you know, you know, look at the guys that, you know, have all the records in Indy of all the wins. Um, Ed, the ace McCullough, uh, Don Perdome, um, you know, that's, those are big, big names, you know, to be mentioned. Uh, with and you know Ed the Ace McCullough never won a championship, but he's won Indy in a funny car more than anybody ever. Um, so yeah, oh eight was a big one. I was still with Jimmy Proc. Uh, you know, uh, two of my three Indy wins were with Jimmy. One was with uh, Mike Neff, and Mike Neff, you know, had really good luck at Indy. He uh, he won it as a driver. So, uh, actually, I think he won it twice. Twice. Back to back, by the way. How great is Neff? Yeah. Is Neff totally, like, underrated as a drag racing personality star? Because he's cool. But given if you just list out all the stuff he's done and that he's won and where he's done it and how he's done it, like, I don't know if the guy gets enough appreciation. Yeah, Mike Neff, he was good. Uh, You know, had fun driving for him. Um no, no, no worries. I mean, he's he's wanted as a crew chief. He's wanted as a driver, and uh, you know, Mister, he's he's steady, Mister Cool. Um, and had a lot of good times with him. Uh, interesting stuff. And and then, uh, you know, you go on, and in uh, later on, in 2013, you're able to pick up another, your most recent U.S. Nationals victory. Yep, that was that one was with Neff, and. Uh, you know, that was the year that we had we switched. John had switched this mid, mid-year. I went to Neff. He went to Jimmy. John went on to win the championship with Jimmy. 
Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm really, really excited to be back with Jimmy and, and Chris Cunningham. Uh, that's, that's where I feel like it, it's home. And, you know, they went on to win uh, Indy with, with Beckman, and they actually doubled up with the, the, the shootout, the Traxxas shootout at the time. And, you know, so we all, we all know what we've got to do. We've all won this race. Uh, I, I would like nothing more than to, you know, win it now that Chris is here, Chris Cunningham and the new, the team we have around us. Uh, we all, they all live here. Um, in fact, I think they're real close to the racetrack. So uh, I think it would be a pretty fun celebration, you know, come Monday night, if, uh, if we can get this done, you know, for the fourth time, that, that's a pretty cool number winning Indy four times. And I've also been runner up uh, twice. Uh, once to Ashley, uh, I think I was ahead and my car blew up, uh, crossed the f- finish line on fire. And then another run or another year, I was runner up to Mike Ashley. And, you know, uh, I was ahead in that race and our blower drive broke and then the car just quit. So uh, I had a lot of a lot of final rounds here and, and, and um, hoping, about- to ha- hoping to add another one. Well, exactly. And uh, to me, that's the interesting stuff, Robert, because we get to see you guys and the drivers get all the love. That's just a fact. You're the face of the deal. You do the most talking. Uh, You know, your face is on the rig. It's on the T-shirt, that kind of deal. But you are the first person to say that, look, it's the crew guys and it's the crew chief that give you the car that you can win or lose. Like you get you get the tool that you can take to victory. I was speaking with Beckman the other day in the year that he had Jimmy. And you guys raced in the final round, if I'm correct, right? 2015. So you've yep. you've had to That's face. Right. That was it. I've had eight. I've had eight finals, or, or no, seven finals, or anything. It's, it's, six or seven. It's a yeah, so many that we can't even track keep track of them. But you've had to go to battle with Jimmy Proc, and you've had to go to battle against Jimmy Proc. And that is just such a unique and interesting perspective that you have, especially since you got him now. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, He's the guy you want to go into battle with. Um, number one, because he's so talented, so good. Number two, he's just a lot of fun to race with. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's so much fun racing with Jimmy and Chris and you know, it's, you've got to have both. Okay. You, it, things don't work if, if you're not a team and you're not, you're not first and foremost, best friends. And, you know, because we spend a lot of time at the track together. Okay. Sometimes you're there around, uh, you know, your crew chiefs and your team more than you are your own family. So, you know, it's, it's all got to work. There's got to be chemistry and, you know, Jimmy and I are, are really close and it's, it's been a good run and i I don't want it to end anytime soon, that's for sure. And you have the points lead. You reference the countdown, the countdown format. Uh, you know, we always fight uh, with, you know, depends on who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm either defending or maybe there's a, a way to tweak it to make it better. Uh, but the bottom line is you've benefited from it and you've been, uh, you've lost because of it, right? You've seen both sides of the that's countdown. Correct. Yeah, 07, 07, I would have been the champ the first year of the countdown. I'd have been a ch- the champ if there wouldn't have been a countdown. And, you know, 09, I started from the number 10 spot and ended up winning it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, you definitely have to have your act together this time of year. Okay. I feel that Indy is definitely a kickoff for the countdown and, you know, winning the biggest race of the year going into the countdown, you have some momentum that would be bitching. And that's kind of the goal. That's what you want. And, um, I've won five races already this year, which is a career high for me. I've, I've won five before, but if I want to be the, the 2019 champ, I'm going to have to win eight or nine this year. And when you look back on a season where you won eight or nine and won a championship, that's, uh, that's definitely a, a successful year. So, um, uh, we're, we're not going to get the championship if we don't have eight wins. That is a prediction that I know is, is going it, to, it's going to, going to be the truth interesting well, I, I i tend to agree just looking at the way it's all played out 
Um, given funny cars, you know, someone is going to step up. You got JR, who has won this race two years in a row, caps emerging. Uh, the boss, John Force, the 150th win. Now that's in the rearview mirror, and that's that monkey is gone. And so now he's can he's kind of freed up to just do whatever he is capable of doing. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, and it's exciting to see that team running well. Uh, I feel that, you know, that would that that would be like a dream come true is he and I fighting it out to the end. Uh, I did that no nine with Ashley and it kind of takes a little pressure off when you're when you're fighting your teammate for a championship. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of good cars. Langdon, he ran really good in Brainerd. Uh, Tommy Johnson's, you know, Hagen. There's, uh, it is going to be a dog fight and, you know, the little points, every qualifying run, uh, trying to get points is it, that's going to pay off. So real quick here, things are going to change and every run is just going to be magnet magnified and, uh, we, we can't mess up. We, I feel though that, uh, we've, been, we're in a good a position as we ever have been, you know, to win this championship we're running good we really haven't ever struggled this year you know we haven't had uh three or four bad races ever uh, this year so um you know we've got to put it all together we've got the team that can do it and uh looking forward to it i just want to get going now have you been i know jimmy tests things i know and i know there was no big giant in the test this year um, that, that, you know, a lot of people said, Hey, let's, uh, let's just kind of focus on, uh, doing some other things. But, uh, the domination hasn't been there and it makes me wonder, is that on purpose? Are you guys figuring things out? Are you working on clutch discs? Are you, uh, you know, setting up for the final run using this past couple of races? I mean, you you know, you've had wins and you've had success, but it, it's more like, how are you? strategically planning these final six races, uh, including Indy, of course. Well, I, I don't think we've changed our approach. You know, we go to every race wanting to win, you know, wanting to make four solid qualifying runs. And, uh, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy's forte is to, to be low ET every round. Okay. Uh, and you, with that has to be some consistency and we, you know, it's what we really worked on this year is consistency. And, you know, there's been years where I've won races and you get a lot of lucky breaks and lucky rounds. Well, we haven't had that. We haven't needed it. We've, we've been solid all year long. And yes, we did set aside a bunch of clutch discs right after Houston when we were winning because we were super happy with them and we have those if we need them. Uh, we feel that what we have today is actually is good, um, but we have options, and uh, we've just got to, you know, put it all together. Driver has to do his job. Uh, like you said earlier, you know, I give credit where to, you know, the team and the crew. I really feel that uh, it's 70% car, 30% driver. Uh, you've got to have a good car to win, and, uh, you know, and then the, the driver has to do their job. So uh, can't do it without these guys. They're, they're the best. And I feel that I, I am set up with the best team to go into this countdown. And I just, I'm ready. I don't want to wait any longer. I want to keep going. Well, the good news is it is this week and this Friday you will get your opportunity to go out there. All right, some other questions. Obviously, the John 150 thing, just a load off of everybody. Amazing. 150 and 50 for you, like milestones this year. It's been a year of milestones, which has got to be very nice. It is. It is. Except for I had it below 100 that he was, you know, only ahead of me 99. And then the next race, he pumps it back up to 100. That's the career. Is that the career? Like, you know, you got to keep it under a hundred wins more than you, that he has. Well, just think of that. Okay. He's a hundred ahead of me. Okay. That's double the amount of wins I have. Not ever going to get touched. That number is not going to get touched. Uh, but it's a, it's a, a new era too, you know, in funny car racing. Uh, you're not, you don't see the dominance like you did back then. Uh, We've, we've got a lot of good cars. There's 10 cars that can win any race they go to. And 
you know, they're all, they've all been working hard. I know a lot of teams tested in Brainerd and it's not going to get any easier. Um, going to take a lot of hard work, dedication, and uh, this team is, is up for the task, I promise. All you got to do is win. You've had five wins already this year, okay? Do what you did this year for the next 20 straight years, and you'll be right there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But it's 20 years. Man, oh, man. That's, 20 that's 20 years equaling your career best year. And uh, you'll be uh, right there, assuming John doesn't win any more races. Okay, uh, next. First you know, off, I don't think I'm going to drive for 20 more years like John. Yeah, well, that's a new era, too. So. You're a different uh, kind of kid. Everybody's a little different now. John is a special case. Yep. And uh, a different generation, right? They did things differently than this modern generation, I think, does. We're seeing that on the stock car side of things, too. It's just a, it's just a different generation. And I agree with it, by the way. I think it is a smart, smart uh, play. All right, the 1320 stuff, Robert. 1320 stuff. You know, it's advancing, right? This could be, I don't want to say it, but maybe it's true, uh, could be the last uh, U.S. Nationals at 1,000 foot. Who knows, right? They're talking. There's all kinds of talking going on, um, even some experimenting going on. What, what are your thoughts uh, on this now as it continues to evolve? Is this, you know, do you consider this an ongoing thing that we should be tracking? No, not at all. In fact, uh, you're talking about stuff that I haven't even heard of, so... Um, it's not being talked about around here. That's for sure. Um, it's nothing we want to talk about. And, uh, I've been in pro meetings and everything else. And, uh, it's nothing that, uh, any of the, any of the current team owners are interested in. Okay. No, listen, I like your, uh, angle. I like what you have to say. And, uh, I appreciate that. Okay. What about your Southern California guy or your California guy? Excuse me for saying that, but you know, we lost Bill Donor. He was out at Seattle hanging out at the track. And uh, a couple of weeks later, he passes away. And many people, uh, you know, credit him and his management of all those California racetracks, including Seattle and others, as, uh, you know, a shepherd for drag racing, right? Like getting us kind of through to the modern professional era. Uh, we lost him. Did you have a relationship with him? And uh, always sad to lose one of our, you know, great icons, people who have participated in building the sport to this point. Uh, exactly. No, honestly, he was before my time, uh, but I've heard, I actually have met him, um, talked to him several times, but uh, I've heard nothing but good things and lots of great, funny stories. But uh, it's pretty it's pretty apparent that this guy was probably one of the best promoters ever of our sport. And uh, he's, he's the guy that kind of got us to where we're at today, that's for sure. Certainly, John has got many of those stories. And he told me a couple uh, out there in Seattle, which I thought were pretty cool. I don't know if that would work today in today's modern era sport, but it's certainly uh, very cool. So it's time for the game face now, Robert. It is uh, U.S. Nationals Week in Indianapolis. Uh, when are you going to hit the track? What do you got scheduled for the week leading up to Q1 of 5 Friday night? Well, just working here at the shop. Uh, we have a big sponsor summit. All of our sponsors will get together on Thursday and try to figure out how they can, you know, increase, uh, you know, this partnership that we have and work with each other, do business together. Uh, and it's really what it's all about today is B2B. And uh, we try to get all of our sponsors together in one room and everybody put their heads together and see how we can't uh, – increase each 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 business and each company and at the same time you know create a little more uh, excitement and you know support of nhra drag racing and john force racing well we wish you good luck in your quest to win the chevrolet performance u.s nationals for a fourth time you've got a tremendous record two-time champ points leader getting ready for the final stretch run and uh, this is where it gets very entertaining it has been a great year so far totally wide open and funny car you will have a lead going into the countdown but not the lead that you have now good luck at the u.s nationals good luck this weekend robert height thank you for coming on wfo radio podcast thanks for having me joe and i uh, look forward to seeing you out there this week i will be there and i'm stoked as well it's going to be great thanks robert cool thank you thanks robert robert height 
with us here on WFO Radio. Our Indie Week, WFO and the Big Go going strong. And I appreciate all you people who have listened to all of our shows. Got some feedback that it made the work week go by quicker. Hopefully it did. And I want your feedback on this new rollout, like the interviews stretched out over the course of the week so that you can hear a little WFO Joe every single day of the week. I know that some people are going to be against it. I'm for it, though. Hey, I want to remind everybody. Nitro Fish Trailer, get your WFO Radio t-shirts at the event or Nitro Fish Racing online if you're never going to make it to an event. But it is cool, and Saturday is WFO t-shirt day. A lot of WFOers are all wearing their t-shirt on Saturday, WFO Radio t-shirt day, Saturday. But thanks to Robert, and Jack Beckman, Freiberger, Erica, Matt Hartford on The Ignition Show. How great was that? Matt Hartford calling in different style interview because ignition is a different style show that is meant to be entertainment what it turns out to be every week it's different sometimes we achieve sometimes not so much now this is where the my time segment would typically be and i will give you a little bit of my time instead of forcing you to put on another audio file this is it for the week of course you know subscribe write a review podcast app all that stuff Stitcher, tune in. We're on all of that. But now it is just me and you. I don't know that I've ever been excited as much as I am for the Chevrolet Performance U.S. Nationals, the big go, Indy. Why? Well, there's a whole lot going on. But for me, these past couple of years when I've joined the track announcing team and I've been out there and getting to know and see and understand, it's all about understanding. What's going into it? How much work is going into it? Who's doing it? How much is it costing? The effort. And the effort is extreme. And the people, they work so hard. They're smart. They're good people. I wish them all success, but they all can't have success. What will decide that? They all seem so well prepared. They're all working so hard. But somehow, some way, the cosmic forces that I always reference and to you it might be different than it is to me but you know what i'm talking about the thing that you can't control the outside element who knows what it is or what causes it you were a good helped a little old lady across the street maybe you get a little good luck or you took somebody else's shopping cart maybe you get some bad luck or maybe it's not about luck maybe it's about preparation You were yucking it up in the pit area and you didn't focus or you who knows. Joe Costello came by on the Mellow Yellow Walking Tour and featured you and the goodwill of the fans cheering you on propelled you to victory. We just don't know. For what reason, whomever wins the U.S. Nationals will win the U.S. Nationals. That's the fun of it. And in all categories, we got the Mickey Thompson Top Fuel Harley Davidson World Championship on the line. Ty Tharp, Doug Vansell. Bo Lane, who was injured in a horrific crash out there in Seattle, is going to join us in the broadcast booth. Think of that. The moments and the big things that are happening. Things that have already happened or are probably down to the final round. Dodge Hemi Challenge. The Samtech Factory Stock Showdown. The Factory Stock Podcast, something else worth subscribing. I know you got a million podcasts you listen to, and we're all fighting each other for your ear. Hopefully, we put up a good fight this week. So what is my final thought as we get ready for Indy? I wish everyone a safe weekend. The fans, the crew members, the drivers... To be able to participate in something such as this, something so epic and huge, something that is historic and will be discussed, maybe not as many people will be discussing uh, Indy as will be discussing the Super Bowl and such, but a whole lot more people are participating in it. We got thousands and thousands of drag racers and crew members and sponsors and media people, OE guys and corporate types and everybody is converging on Indianapolis for this race. And I just, like Alan Reinhardt says, hope we get great weather, and I know we'll have a great time. Most importantly, a safe weekend. Big thanks to 
Giovanni in Miami for putting the interviews together, getting them up where you can hear them. Perhaps the only reason I'm saying this is because he's sitting across from me. We'll never know. Also, Steve, a.k.a. Bug Hunting, Brenwald, who does the artwork that you've been seeing that makes, it look, make, makes us look nice and professional, continues the illusion that we like to put forth. Big thanks to Patrick the Webmaster, who has been with us forever. Back to the satellite radio days. Jumping in and fixing an issue here and there. Patrick, you are the man. Thank you. And everybody who helps WFO, our great sponsors, you know who they are by now. I certainly hope you do. And we will have WFO stickers out there on site. So if you see me, yell WFO, and there's a good chance I will have remembered to put some stickers in my pocket. But you know me, maybe not. But I'll have them, and that's what matters. Thanks to Robert Height. Thanks to Jack Beckman. Thanks to Alan Reinhardt. Thanks to Erica. Thanks to Freiberger. Thanks to Kevin McKenna and John DeBartolomeo and Ed Federkyle and Hank the Crank and Stevie Fast. Thanks to Robert Height, Daryl Heron, Leah, Kirk Collins, who came on Factory Stock Podcast, Jason Line, everybody, Matt Hartford. Thank you all for making this week a fantastic week. But now it is time to race. Light them up. The views and opinions of the hosts, guests, or callers do not necessarily reflect that of the station ownership, advertisers, or agencies. I love WFO Radio. Oh, yeah. Hey, engine builders, Total Seal Piston Rings are the leader in ring seal technology, and they go out of their way to help their customers and will make custom sets for any specific piston you might have. Customer service, top notch. Made in America? Absolutely. They're located in Phoenix, Arizona, and they've got everything it takes to develop the world's best piston rings. Give them a call at 800-874-2753 or go to TotalSeal.com. Your education. What are you going to do with your life? That is what it's all about. And samtech.edu can help you figure it all out. The School of Automotive Machinists and Technology always says start your education at full speed because they will get you in, get you started, get you learning rapidly. The school is located in the Houston, Texas area. They've got a great campus. They're always expanding. But most importantly, Their relationships within the performance industry is what sets them apart. We're talking about block programs, head programs, CNC programs, motorsport EFI tuning, all part of Samtech. They can even help persons that are eligible under the GI Bill. Go to the website, samtech.edu, or call 713-683-3817. Would you rather do something you love as your job? I know I would. Samtech.edu. Subscribe to WFO Radio on iTunes. Never miss a show. And don't forget to write a review. WFO. This is WFO Radio.